Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. We have a wonderful guest today, James Peters. Now, I know the power of mindset, whatever it is you would like to achieve, be it health, wealth, happiness, success, it all starts with mindset. So I'm really looking forward to a conversation with James today. I just want to make an official shout out to our show sponsors, Dreamweaver Artist Ranch. We are streaming live on mspnewsglobal.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and we're also streaming through the E360 TV network under Fresh Takes, going out to Apple TV, Fire TV, Android TV, Roku and many more. And we're also on Business Innovators Radio Network. So let's bring in our incredible guest, James Peters. James, welcome to Brilliance Business oh. TV. It's great to no. have you here. No, thank you for having me. I'm uh, I'm excited. What an introduction. So uh, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to our conversation and uh, and seeing where it all goes. So you serve your clients with mindset, and I know you have your own story to tell, James. So just take us back a little bit about your background and past and a little bit of your story that has led you to where you are today. Yeah, no, 100% Mark, and obviously give you a little bit more insights into uh, I know how I've got to where I am today, So because I'm ultimately a very, very... A uh, different person um, doing very many different things than I was doing four years ago. Um, what I now call these events in life, when we go through difficulties, I call them what I, I, I kind of a like graduation events, events where they really change us at the core, uh, and we have an opportunity then to to really go and look at different paths in our lives and how we can take that forward. And mine happened in two thousand two thousand seventeen um i uh i lost my dad and i lost my son and then i was uh, accused of a of a crime i hadn't committed which which ultimately would have led to i know at least a 20 20 year sort of jail sentence if i had been convicted um i went through that particular process got to the end got a not guilty verdict about eight or nine months after probably in the middle of sort of 2018 um and but there was obviously a journey in that eight months from being you know obviously through dealing with grief dealing with loss dealing with suicidal thoughts um dealing with a lot of uh, anxiety and depression as well at those particular stages obviously spending some time in jail as well so a lot of challenges in that period of time um but really from 2018 was really when i had that uh, you know that change to say what am i going to do next my life had completely changed and um and through that was really when I started to evolve myself and look at ways of which um I could take my story uh, of what happened to me um and 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 really sort of impact the world or impact others um going forward um and that's kind of led me now to 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 where I am obviously uh, you know two or three years down the line being a Jay Shetty coach but I'm obviously happy to you know, go into further details, but that's just a little bit of my, um, you know, my backstory. It's a great story, James, and what strikes out to me, it's not actually that long ago, four years ago. So that's just a testament to people out there that within a four-year period, you can transform your whole life because you have managed to get all out of all of those dark moments and really transform yourself. But you're transforming other people now as well and serving others, which is really, really incredible. I can imagine it was a lot to go through, very stressful times. How did you get through your dark moments, James? 
Well, yeah, they, 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 it was very difficult at the very, very beginning. I had no what I would now classify as a tool set. I, I hadn't picked up a self-development book you know, prior to 2017. Uh, I wasn't listening to any any sort of YouTube channels or anything around motivation or positivity or anything. It was just it was completely alienated to me. I just wasn't. I just didn't have had that in my in on my radar so when i went through my challenges i had richly no tool set to rely on um and in the darkest times i mean really at the very very darkest times when i went through a stage of being kind of addicted to um you know uh, painkillers and and sleeping pills and um and and really it got to a point where I, I really didn't want to be here. And I think actually uh, I was mentioning this on you know, a, a week ago to, to, to some, some other people that um, it was really my dog, which I've still got today um, really and look at, looking at his face and realizing that I had a responsibility to look after him, which actually probably made me not want to take my own life. Um, and it was that catalyst really. Then I phoned the Samaritans and then I actually got help. But probably the first thing which really helped me was, you know, w- w- was kind of meditation and really started to follow that particular path. But in the real darkest times, um, I I really, once I started, once I had that breakthrough of knowing that I had a responsibility, um, it kind of really started to forge a, a route for myself to think, what 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 do I need to do to you know to try to better myself or try to get you know feel better about myself? And the first thing was was ultimately getting some assistance from the Samaritans, which is obviously a mental health charity here in the UK, and then through to finding a uh, uh, sort of a counsellor who could really help me, um, uh, who had a you know strong background in Buddhism, so that really helped. And then, but meditation was really the first first what tool. I got which really helped me to just really calm my thoughts and I was only doing 10 minutes a day but just that 10 minutes just just able for me to just calm my mind less of the anxiety and less of the stress I could just breathe a little bit better I, um, and uh, I wasn't kind of reacting to the thoughts I was having so much and then that obviously then led me to then obviously breath work which I was doing as well so these were probably the first real two things but I think ultimately it was actually seeking help um, which I think is probably the most challenging thing for anyone to do for me personally I was actually a really private person so for me actually reaching out to anyone was a was a real challenge um and uh, but that I think really helped especially someone who was not involved it wasn't another family member it wasn't a friend it was someone who was completely neutral who just gave me a platform to just be able to uh, speak and listen without non-judgment and no advice it was just you know a real sort of environment which I, I could share what I was going through but there wasn't any you know any advice to uh, uh, you know to give me um, really helped. I think anyone who has a dog will totally relate to that. Mm. They are so loving. I love my dog. I've had her now for 11 years and they do become your life and family and your world. And also, I'm very big on meditation as well, James. I use gratitude, visualisation, meditation. I myself am an ex-drug addict. I collapsed and died from drug use. And I think sometimes when you go through hard times, they do propel you into a better future like you. You have used it to do good with your life and to go out and serve others. Now, you mentioned the support you got from the Samaritans and mental health charities. Some people are scared to reach out for help and some people suffer alone. I always say never suffer alone. What was your experience like when you first reached out and asked for help, James? I mean, it was, it kind of was a bit of a light bulb moment because I hadn't reached out before. I was, let's say, very sort of private person. Um, it was a difficult time of, within my family with what we were going through. And obviously what I myself was going through, going through sort of a criminal court or, or criminal case. 
Um, and, and we didn't really want to ultimately, I think as a family who were uh, around, why we wanted to sort of you know, talk about it. We had obviously just lost the, the dad and obviously a grandson as well. So um, I, and obviously it was really difficult. So for me, it was that real point where I got to pretty much, I would say the lowest I'd got to um, where I was committed, you know, to not being here and just looking at my dog's face and his eyes and realizing that he knew what I, you know, you can, sometimes there's a sixth sense there, isn't it? With a pet they're, they're looking at you yeah. and they're, they kind of know what you're thinking and what you're going to do. And he yeah, kind of just was looking at and that connection with the eyes just made me want to think actually I've got a, that responsibility as I've mentioned but then phoning someone it was just someone who didn't know me didn't know the background didn't know my story didn't know what I was going through but I could just speak but there was no this listened right you know in, in this day and age I think actually giving someone just a platform just to listen to someone but actually really listen not listen to respond or listen to former judgment or anything like that which you, you know, it does happen a lot just someone who just provided a platform for you to just share be open just listen to you um not give advice really helps because then you you're it's out the thoughts you have are out of your head and you're speaking to someone else and when actually you do that it's easier to process that's why journaling i think is another really good tool to have because again it takes your thoughts out of your head onto paper and actually when you actually look at your thoughts or what you're going through you can actually really look at them in you know a lot more of an objective perspective yes. but yeah I think it was just really listening just that platform for someone who could just you know listen to myself and just give me give me that space um, which i had never had before so anyone out there that may be struggling at the moment, James, what advice would you give them on reaching out to people? Because so many people don't want to ask for help. I would always say, really, you know, it's, it's one of the things which obviously is pushed a lot. And I know it's very difficult, but I will always reach out, you know, and I'd always reach out to someone, you know, who is a not not involved with yourself i always yes. think it's difficult with family or friends because they're kind of they they have a sort of a um, an opinion exactly exactly it's an opinion they're in the, they mean well they want to help but you know with that it can be it can sort of um it's more yeah kind of like an advice type type thing or sometimes they might just say well you know, just get on with it or get through it or something they're really kind of unhelpful advice whereas actually reach out to someone who's just a complete bystander especially within a within a charity they're specialists they're trained and i've you know i've been through sort of you know kind of that sort of mental health uh, as a first aider now so i kind of have that skill to a certain extent so i always welcome for people to reach out to myself if they ever you know want to want to chat or anything like that because it is so important to reach out to someone who can just provide you with a platform just for you to share uh, without, as I say, without sort of non-judgment uh, or any advice. Never suffer alone. I will connect you with my close friend, Lady Kendall Jagger, actually. She mm -hmm. has a great radio show and I'll see if she would like you to go on as a guest. It's for women's mental health, but they do men's as well. It's to an audience of five million. I've been a guest on there a couple of times, but I think she will love your story. So I will connect you with her, James. James, awesome. we're just going to a quick commercial break. So please stay where you are. Thank you for joining us for part one of Brilliance Business TV conversations with leading experts in business. Join us after the commercial break. Hello, this is uh, Stephen Buckner, and uh, just wanted to tell you uh, I support the uh, Dreamweaver project. Um, it's a great product project where you know, artists such as myself will be able to come together and uh, basically collaborate and to have a retreat to feel accepted and welcome. And that's something that artists here and around the world could always benefit from. So I just want to say, please support the Dream Reliever Project. Um, I think it's for a great cause. And uh, I salute all the independent artists out there 
and artists that are signed as well. And uh, have a wonderful day. Welcome back to Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. We're joined today with the incredible James Peters. He shared his personal journey, he shared his dark moments, and he shared how reaching out for help is always the answer. Welcome back, James. Welcome. No, thank you, Mark. I enjoyed the first bit. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the second. Yes, no, you're a Jay Shetty certified coach. He's such a big name. He has built such a great name for himself and he puts out great content. How did you get involved in that, James? Tell us all about that. Yeah, it was a bit, it was such, such a journey. So as I kind of mentioned in the first part, you know, um, once I started on that self-development, personal development type journey, then you just things start to just snowball. I um, mean, I first got into like Les Brown and Esther Hicks. I was big into bed meditation. I love yeah. I loved all that. And well, then uh, picked up, started picking up books like Think and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill and uh, Michael Singer's books. I really enjoyed the surrender experiment, the untethered soul. And I just really started, you know, really just, just I'd never picked up a book like this before. And suddenly I was now, hooked in just continuing to better myself um and naturally obviously you're coming off youtube i always came across you know jay and on the and uh, and kind of the youtube videos he was putting out there or podcasts he was being you know interviewed on and and then obviously with that i got in got into on purpose you know his first you know obviously his podcast and started listening to that and then just was fascinated by him about how taking that kind of monk type mindset and bringing it into modern day living and obviously he released a book last year as well about uh, uh around that so think like a monk so um he just he came on my radar um and then i was i had at that, that particular time as well i had a, you know a coach in the beginning of 2020 i had like a, a coach a uh, life coach and what he was kind of really sort of working with me to really understand what the next steps were, were for me as a um as a person and at that time i was still pretty introverted i was still struggling i had broken through a lot of barriers but i was still you know i was still struggling in life in general um and he said look you've got a fascinating story you can help a lot of other people you know you should you know think about you know coaching or writing a book or putting a course out there and all this type of stuff um and i kind of took it away and was thinking about it because it was so um kind of alien to what I was as a person before or what I would have ever done before. Um, but it was right. One of those things suddenly on Facebook, you know, that you know, ad popped up and it was Jay and he was did, just launched his school, his certification school. I think it was around about March last year and I got involved around April, May. So I was probably one of the first maybe 50, 50 people, maybe, maybe less than that. Um, and yeah, I just loved it. I just loved the whole process of, of, of the coach I mean he does all the videos it's I mean, it took it took me 12 months to get through the course I think you at best you could probably get through in about six months but it's really intense there's a lot of modules to go through which he does there's a lot of homework and reflective work to do um which you all have to monitor and, and assess and you have to go on those obviously calls weekly calls and you have to be on those because you you submit documentation to pass um, your certification you also have to do you have to always set up your own life coaching business as well. Um, and you have to coach people and obviously show that uh, through uh, as you get, you have an assessor to go through that with you. That's usually like a three, four month types, uh, you know, type of process as well. So it is hugely regular, rigorous um, to get to get to. And uh, yeah, I got my certification in June of this year. Congratulations. Um, and yeah, and then obviously then I've sort of, you know, continued to evolve it. You know, I've taken it. Obviously, you can go many different ways with the coaching curriculum of Jay. You know, you can, you can go, you'd be a spiritual coach like him. You could be a life coach. You could be a career coach. You could be a relationship coach. I mean, you can take it any way you wanted. But for me, it was always about mindset and transformational mindset and really taking people from negative emotions, negative feelings, negative thought patterns and really looking at breaking those um, and building a kind of a more positive future. 
Congratulations. And like you mentioned, personal development, it's a lifelong journey, never gets done. It's just ongoing. But you really put in the discipline in the hard work because nothing is ever given to us. We have to put in the graph, James, and you have certainly done that. Now, we talked a little bit about grief. I know you had to cope with lots of grief. What was your grief recovery process, James? Grief was kind of, it went in two different sections, I would say, for myself, um, in the fact that going through what I had gone through, loss of a dad and a son, but then being accused of something I hadn't done, it kind of, it, the whole grief process kind of went out the window a little bit because I had other things that had that thing to focus on, relatively to you know, you know, realistically, you know, save my own life. Because as I say, if I, you know, if it had gone wrong for me, um, and it goes wrong for many people, um, you, you know, there was a, a, a twenty, a twenty years of you know jail sentence there. So, um, so really, that that first part, it kind of the grief didn't maybe come till later um but for me really what it worked for myself um was actually writing letters you know i think i i, I really started working with um uh, with a counselor um and she just really helped me to say well, you know obviously your you know your son's not around and your and your dad's not around anymore and really start to write letters to them and actually just sort of you know talk like you're talking to them um and i used to go and meet her every couple of weeks and i'd you know go and actually read the letters to her which i'd written and i don't know how many you know letters i wrote probably three or four for for both at that particular time um obviously there was darker moments as i went through you know there was tired of suicidal and depression anxiety and all those type and then that kind of really locked into grief as well uh but i really felt or really found with working with someone um, and actually writing letters for me personally was um, was probably very therapeutic in getting over, you know, what what I have done. And I like today I feel a very different person. I don't kind of I've built a whole new identity, which really yes. means that I don't resonate so much with the person from before. Um, but I always get there was always things like things will pop up and I'll think, oh, I, didn't, I thought I maybe dealt with that and I hadn't dealt that with that before because naturally, you know, things always, you know, come, you know, come to mind. Um, so it's always, it's, it's a continue, like, I think he, like as someone always said to me, you know, healing is a, is not an overnight process. It's an overtime process. And I think that's yes. why I think you, you just go through different stages uh, where, where you cope with it better than more. But I think for me at that time and really the darkest times was writing letters. And it's important you share your story, James, because it can help so, so many people. There's a lot of stigma when it comes to getting counselling. People don't want to admit that they need support and they may be embarrassed or ashamed of the thought of having counselling. But like you've mentioned, it helped really to support you and just a simple process of putting your feelings down on paper and writing that out. Little things like that can really help you to move forward. So always share your story. It may even just help one person and it could go on to help millions of people. And it's really important that you keep on sharing that incredible story. How do you cope now with negative emotions, negative feelings, negative beliefs? I mean, that, or, or naturally, it happens. It happens. We're, we're human. We're not. We're not. We're not designed to be happy or you know all the time. Um, but um, you know, for myself now, I've built up a tool set, and so with that, you know, it, it helps me a lot more. Um, if when like sort of feelings come up, which I would feel is more more negative um i mean i always start my day by trying to get myself i got this actually from reading the book um power versus force by david hawkins which is really about the map of consciousness and actually where you are you know on there um but for me i try to get myself to a stage of 
sort of love as quickly as I possible can in when I wake up in the morning. And that's about sort of going outside into my garden, connecting to nature, journaling, meditating, um, reading. Um, so when I'm start, so I'm already starting made and an exercise as well is a staple of what I do. But so I have these daily rituals now. So um, negative feelings and thoughts don't come up as often as maybe they did previously. But if they do come up, um, I have a tool set around, you know, meditation um, and, and, and journaling and really sitting with those feelings. I'm big about, you know, feel your feelings. I don't think we do that as much as people. We try to suppress them, try to push them under the carpet, yes. especially, and, and I really try to feel them um, and really let them just come up and through me and don't attach to them um, as, uh, as like, like maybe I, I, I had done before um sometimes like certain things you can shock yourself sometimes when you do feel a little bit low and you feel your energy sapping you know i just maybe do some qigong or some star jumps or just really once you change the your energy in your body it makes such a difference sometimes if you just sit and you feel negative then and, you, and, and your energy is low then it just it just all comes together and you, you don't get any better so sometimes just shocking your system by just doing something really quickly to shock your body is a really good way of changing kind of negative thoughts and feelings quite you know straight away but definitely through meditation and, and, and journaling and breath work i think uh I, I'm able to really sort of it may, you know it may take half an hour it may take two hours on the worst day but you know I can kind of really get through that a little bit more now with a tool set I've built up. Now, there may be people out there who are going through some struggles through hard times. So just tell us a little bit about the kind of clients that you work with. Who would you ideally like to reach out to you for support and they want support from you? So what kind of clients do you work with, James? I really work with people who are struggling in life naturally, um, but they also have a vision that they want to get better. You know, obviously I don't, I'm not a psychotherapist, so I don't, I don't deal so much with unpacking the past because that's, that, that's obviously a specialized job from, you know, from a therapy perspective. What I do is really look for someone who is struggling in life, you know, maybe wants to, you know, but they want to get better. They want to go to the next, they, they, they don't want to go, and sit and take you know a lot of people i've speak to i've been on antidepressants prozac for a very very long periods of time and they want to come off that they want to move forward uh they want to have a better job they want to have a better life they want better relationships they want better health they want better wealth want all these sort of things but and so with myself i can really work with them to really build a, an identity of what their future self looks like i'm all about you know if you have a goal of where you want to be in the future then you have a purpose to getting up in the morning and that could be right i know it could be your health you want to improve that or it could be you know you want to you know you, you want to sort of uh, you know have a different career than what you have now uh, and it's all about creating that identity and putting in daily habits and rituals around that but also looking at you know breaking you know certain sort of negative thought patterns i think you know even if we've had a really good upbringing a lot of the a lot of the patterns we run uh, as adults are are, are going to come from our parents really and how they've reacted to certain situations and we've kind of kind of really kind of replicated that so sometimes you do see that through families or people come to me and said i just keep attracting like the same person or the same relationships and it's and it's really down to because they're running the same patterns and it's about actually just giving different people a different perspective on how to think um and and really through that a lot of it obviously does again start with you know, meditation and journaling and um and, 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 and kind of and kind of breath work but i really try to work with people who can who want to move forward you know who want you know to move forward in life um and uh, and have a you know, I know a vision of uh, or, or I help them to work through building a vision of their future and just share a little bit of say someone reaches out to you what are, is the next steps and then how do you go on to support them James yeah so uh, a lot of people I mean a lot of people do contact obviously through through Instagram myself and that's probably my main my main my port of call uh i mean i do have a guide on my instagram which you can download for free it's 13 pages how to you know, which i've written personally around how you know to break um you know negative negative emotions and um and, and and with that 
I do have my own Facebook group as well, which people can join. I do a lot of you know, video and, uh, and email content through, through that as well. Uh, but usually, yes, it's through Instagram. People can reach out directly. And we set up a call, you know, similar call, just, uh, you know, it can be just a phone call. Sometimes it can be a Zoom call. And we just sort of chat through about where they are, where they want to go, what they want to do, and really how I can, you know, help them. Um, so it's just kind of like a discovery call, really. Um, and then through that, um you know obviously if it's something you know we're keen to do i think i can help then we progress to a little bit more of kind of you know one-to-one sessions over probably like a six to eight week period where we really try to nail down some real good habits and rituals and moving forward um around uh what their future wants to be look like and i know the power of just getting a few new rituals just like brushing your teeth every day, you have to get new rituals like meditation, visualization, exercise, gratitude, just little things can have such a big impact. I would encourage everyone out there who may resonate with James, maybe you are going through dark times, through challenges, through stresses, and you want to change to a better future you want to move forwards in a more positive light reach out to james on instagram at james peters lifestyle that's at james peters lifestyle james peters lifestyle james thank you so much for coming on to the brilliance business tv show i've really enjoyed having a conversation with you no thanks again mark thank you for having me i loved it and yeah anyone who uh you know, resonated with anything i said can uh yeah reach out to me or hopefully it's helped uh in a couple of people out there as well it certainly has you have a, such a great story and you're doing such great things james the pleasure's all been mine Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.